And uh, it was in uh, August of 2019, the committee was approved. And then in the fall, November of 2019, the initial members of the response committee for sexual misconduct were voted on and affirmed by our council of elders. And then just this past uh, fall, November, 2020, we added an additional member. So it's now six members. And I just, I just thank God that our council of elders established this committee and that we have it as a standing committee uh, that communicates that we as churches really, we, we are intentional in building safe churches. That's a part of what this committee is about. So, on behalf of the committee, what would you want to communicate to our guys? And I, I think, uh, I think, especially in the in the area of the training that's available to them, mm -hmm. I would say two things. First, that our committee is available for guys to call. We we're glad to take calls and talk you through any situation or any questions you have. But also uh, in commending the leadership team in making every level of ministry safe training is free for anyone in a Sovereign Grace Church. The training is exceptional. Uh, we encourage every church to look at who should go through training, particularly on leadership team. And not only will it equip you as pastors uh, in dealing with this specific area, it will expand your pastoral heart for people who are burned. I know it's done that for me, I preach differently through what I've learned and better understanding the burdens that people are carrying. Mm, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, thank you for the ways that you're serving uh, our churches. It strengthens our churches. It also strengthens our, our polity in the sense of establishing this committee uh, was really a decision that came after another decision by our Council of Elders that any suspicion of abuse or or actual abuse or reports of abuse they must be reported uh, to authorities regardless if state law requires it or not uh, must be reported according to our book of church order so one of the things that that uh, committee does kyle's committee does is to make sure that the, the pastors in our churches are following the book of church order i think most of our guys know that but um uh, our there's a committee that's walking alongside of them as they navigate issues in their church. And as Kyle said, I'm so grateful uh, for helping our pastors care for those who have experienced abuse, because uh, we have more people in our churches, I think, uh, probably in any church in evangelicalism that has some sort of history or knows of someone. And uh, helping them navigate that uh, requires a specific kind of pastoral care. So thank you, Kyle, for how you've been trained the guys in the committee, and now you're helping our churches. We thank God for you. Police would not say if Russell Tuzing knew the child through church in an effort to protect her identity, but police say the alleged crimes date back as far as two years ago. LaGrange police say Russell Tuzing has been charged with sexual battery and child molestation. The 44-year-old is accused of molesting a 13-year-old girl. Police confirmed Tuzing was pastor at Sovereign Grace Church in LaGrange. The alleged crimes, police say, were reported in February, but the allegations date back as far as 2022. Tuzing was arrested and booked into the Troop County Jail last Friday. Jail records show his status as not bondable. It is unclear if he is still employed by the church, but his name is not listed on the church staff page. When we tried to call... The number you reached is not in service. This is a recording. Their phone is offline. Small groups met at the church Wednesday night. That's where we spoke in person with church staffers who say they could not speak on camera, but directed our questions to an email address. Atlanta News First has reached out at this point. They have not returned a request for comment. In Troop County, Carly Barnett, Atlanta News First.